Great. Uh, so could you tell us a little bit about, about yourself and your journey, uh, Dr. Manveer? Yeah, so I am uh, Dr. Manveer Bhatia. I am a senior neurologist and a sleep specialist. I am at present working in my own center, which I run, and now we've been here for almost more than 10 years. And this is in Delhi. Right. So could you tell us a little bit about your journey? How did you start uh, working in neurology? What interested you and what did you eventually specialize in? So I, you know, when the medicine has a long story and a long history to it, unlike other careers. So we do a basic undergrad, then we do a master's. And then after master's, either we stick around in the same field, but or we specialize. So I did an MD medicine and after that, then I realized that um, it's, I'm not very keen to go into the lines like gynae or cardio, which are very demanding kind of lines. So I did, I did work briefly in cancer, uh, but unfortunately I didn't kind of like that line. I saw a lot of women with breast cancer and I saw a lot of children and I had my own child at that time. Um, so I was, it was very disturbing. The, it used to leave a lot of impact on me. So I didn't, I went away from cancer and then thinking of those lines, I thought neurology was the line which came up and it was very fascinating because if you think what we know about neurology today and even about 20 years ago, 30 years ago was very different. We didn't have such imaging techniques, etc. So it was like a big box, a black box. You don't know what's happening in the brain, but the brain controls everything. And so that's how I entered into this field of neurology. It's kind of hard for specializations. You have to go through multiple uh, interviews and theory, first hearing the theory, then interviews. So, but let's say I was fortunate enough and uh, thank my stars and whatever, whoever helped me that I did manage to get into the All India Institute of Medical Sciences at Delhi, uh, which was a very great uh, learning experience, the journey with the faculty, teachers, patients, colleagues, was most wonderful. Okay, amazing. So what has your journey looked like so far? And uh, why do you think sleep is so important in our lives, especially in today's time? So when I was doing, uh, when I cleared the exam in neurology, um, so there was an option or an opportunity came up for me that I would do uh, a sub Another specialization of neurology, which is to monitor the brain and the nervous system, etc., which is called as a lab backup for neurology in simple words. Uh, we at that time at the AIMS were starting or one of the first people to start something called as an epilepsy monitoring program. What it really means is that you monitor individuals for a couple of days, maybe three days, five days, six days. So continuously you are monitoring them to understand about, you know, where the fit is coming from, etc. cetera. Uh, in that process, uh, when we were doing this back in 93, 94, I realized that um, some things were happening at night, which I could not really understand what they were. So they became like an enigma that, you know, I don't know what it is. Patient is having a problem, so, but we need to solve it. So what is it that the patient is having? And these were happening during sleep. And that's how then I ventured into this line uh, of sleep medicine. That's how I entered into it. And uh, those days, uh, sleep medicine overall worldwide is a, let's say, a recent speciality. But in India, it was still a very nascent stage. It was like a premature stage. Uh, so then I did travel to Harvard spent a few months there, studied um, as an observer with the labs, which were doing a lot of sleep work at nights, uh, spent a lot of nights in the labs and with the technical staff to understand the sleep. And that's how the journey from neurology went into sleep over the years. Oh, wow. I mean, thinking about you studying at Harvard and then of course being at Ames, I cannot even imagine myself being so incredible at anything. It, this is so inspiring to even connect with you like this. Uh, my next question to you would be, uh, after such extensive research and being in the field for so long, 
uh, what role do you think sleep plays in our lives? I know, of course, it's a life function, but what what, what is it that you think that it plays a role in our life? Yeah, so I think the journey into sleep medicine has been a real eye opener. And all that I can say that every few days I read a new article or a new revelation and a new discovery, uh, which takes you on another path. So over the years, first it was, like I said, it was the view was that, oh, something's happening to some patients and I need to understand. Let's improve that. As you went deeper, you realized there are lots of types of different types of sleep problems. And then you need to understand the patient as a whole. So for many years, this journey was patient centric. But then over a time and over a period, I realized that the bigger lot is a public around who doesn't understand the sleep at all. What is sleep? Why do we sleep? What happens if we don't sleep? So then I uh, did a lot of work on creating awareness. So over the social media, but face-to-face -face camps, you know, I worked in Madanta, Gangaram. So we were started celebrating World Sleep Day to let people get educated and aware of this. Uh, and that I think has, is now the role uh, that rather than, yes, focusing on the disease for people who come to us to solve them or help them solve the problem, but we need to create a massive awareness about this, the importance of sleep. So that brings me to this question that, so why is sleep important? So over the years, which is very clear with the research, it's not mine, but I can just share it with you, that sleep was said to be like a third pillar of health. And so we have nutrition, you have exercise, and you have sleep. In fact, the recent literature, the research says that sleep is the foundation on which the other two pillars are standing. So sleep, why? Because this, there was a myth for many years that sleep is a very passive process. And when you sleep, the brain shuts down, the body shuts down. That myth has been totally dispelled by the evidence that we have now because we can study the brain during sleep. And it's been seen that there are areas in the brain which kind of light up is the word that we use, but basically means they have increased activity in, state, in sleep. The other thing which came up after all this uh, knowledge is that sleep is not one continuous process. Uh, but which with all the sleep trackers that we have, so people have also understood this. So there is light sleep, there is deep sleep, there is some REM sleep. You know, I have patients coming in saying, no, 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 you don't understand. I don't have deep sleep. So I said, how do you know? No, no, my Fitbit showed me or my Apple Watch showed me. So they have tried to understand this and they come with the question that I want to increase my deep sleep. So they have read a lot about the implications or the functions of sleep. So when we go through these stages, each stage is very important to us. And that brings me to the, another point about sleep, uh, which we call as a three dimensions of sleep. So first is the duration of quantity, means that the number of hours you sleep, which most people understand that if you sleep at 11, 12 or whatever midnight, you wake up at seven or eight. So that is the quantity. The second dimension is the quality. That means that the number of hours you spend in light sleep versus deep sleep versus the dream sleep. So if you spend eight hours asleep, but less time in say deep sleep, you will be tired, foggy, groggy, whatever you want to call it in the morning. So that's the quality dimension. The third dimension which this corona has really added to is the timing of sleep. Uh, timing means that ideally our body is supposed to be in sync with the light outside. So that idiom or phrase which used to be early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy and wise. Uh, but not for all. I mean, now we also know that we are genetically different individuals. Some are evening type, some are morning type. But by and large, let's say that there should be a timing that we should sleep. I have seen people sleeping at 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 a.m., 10 a.m. And they wake up, count eight hours and wake up later. So according to them, they are getting the required time of sleep. 
but the timing is gone haywire so timing is important because we have certain chemicals certain hormones which peak at night when the lights are dim so if you don't allow them to peak you the whole body system or machinery is going to go haywire so we are very edgy irritable uh, not peaceful uh, making wrong choices eating the wrong kind of food all that can happen gaining weight cardiac problems memory problems will start happening i think i personally relate to so much of this because i have a really haywire sleep cycle but uh, of course when once i connect with you more and we speak about this maybe a lot of our uh, viewers and readers will learn about how they can improve themselves so what are when you said that you work with ganga ram and medanta to spread sleep awareness what are a few barriers or adversities that you faced while trying to spread that awareness was there any resistance that you experienced yeah uh human beings as and people now that we are all exposed to so much knowledge you know which is easily accessible uh so people feel they know everything so they feel that you are talking about something uh which is not something so great and you know what is it that you are it's new so it, the mind doesn't accept the fact that oh you are putting sleep into everything now you say sleep and heart is related and you say sleep and brain is related you know something like that so they feel they know all about sleep second we have myths like snoring so snoring is a sign or a symbol of good quality sleep and here we are telling them that snoring is bad for health snoring is a sign that your sleep is not good so those they can't accept certain things third like i said that people have this in a notion that you know whatever time they sleep whatever time they wake up it's fine fourth is a lot of peer pressure a lot of knowledge being shared amongst friends amongst colleagues that people feel that you know once in a while if i don't sleep i take a sleeping pill you also take a pill so we have a lot of sharing our personal experiences knowledge without any research or any wisdom let's say but we pass this around you also take an alcohol you smoke you take marijuana you'll sleep those kind of people who are passing this information along the fourth i think the biggest thing is that we look for role models you know the human brain is made like this that we will look at somebody who has achieved a lot says you know i sleep four hours um and i am fine and i'm able to be productive um so that has also become a, is a big hindrance because they say oh that person said some big leader has said some bollywood star whatever but recently you will see um uh, all sports people um artists etc all talking about the importance of sleep in us you have had football basketball players golf players or talking about I, mean, i have also interacted with a few very senior cricket players and they said even in those days it was well known that two things you should do sleep well and then you'll be good at the field so it helps the good sleep like we say helps in lot of ways so those kind of uh, adversities we did feel you know when you're trying to promote awareness about something but i guess uh, the aim is that you keep persisting and persistence has its rewards so it's taken many years uh, and the i think lot of people have worked hard media has pushed it a lot in print media jan radios companies have helped lot of doctors have been working and now i think in the last 10 years there has been a change the number of people coming forward and seeking help is increasing right. uh, and they themselves are calling in dialing in and saying that you know this is what my problem is, and i need help Mm-hmm. So uh on a more lighthearted topic how do you think i can sleep better uh so i, I wish the answer was very simple but that's the answer that i'm being continuously asked in the last few months um but let's say so we can divide this into two uh, two sub questions or sub sub answers let's say one is for the general 
people who have no issue with sleep. They just want to continue to maintain a good night. And then secondly, we'll discuss people who do have an issue with sleep. So for those, and this applies to those as well, but for those, we need to go a little bit more deeper. So for everyone, there are two simple things that I feel in my practice, which I tell people. One is the body needs to be physically tired and the mind needs to be relaxed. So unfortunately, these two, we don't accomplish this very often or we can't achieve them very often because if we sit the whole day long or in our bed or from one chair to the other, the body is not tired. And at night, we have this thing called as a racing mind. Um, so people continuously think and think and think. The more you think, it's in a way like a stimulation. When you get stimulated, sleep will get pushed away. Mm -hmm. So to go a little deeper, what is that one should... So one thing that you have to remember, to improve the night, you have to work on your day. It cannot just say that I want to do have a good night, but you know my day is whatever I want to do. No. We need to have from the morning time that you wake up, up till the bedtime that has to have certain rules and regulations. Currently, the one big thing that has happened is that the... Yeah. So what is it that's important when we wake up in the morning? Most important now is to get adequate light because there is a messenger in the brain which is telling you to sleep, get into bed. We need to shut that messenger off. That is the melatonin and that gets shut off with the light. So open up the blinds, the curtains, step into your balcony. In this lockdown people, in the period, people have just got very cloistered in their homes. They don't get light, but sleep has gone much worse. So in any case, get the light. Second is the physical activity. During the day, please devote some time to the physical activity. Third is do not spend too much time in bed that you just, they say, oh, we're not sleeping, but I'm lying down for two, three hours. No. So you have to spend as much time as possible outside your bedroom and out of your bed. Fourth is what about the food and the stimulation, the caffeine. So caffeine for people, particularly if they are sensitive, there was a recent study which has been done that how long does it stay in the body? It can stay almost six to eight hours. So we have to take caffeine right right before noon and the ones who are sensitive not in the evening and night similarly for tea you can take tea but it should end chocolates etc so all those energy drinks so they have to be kept away from the near the bedtime the evening time um, it's important to have a light dinner an early dinner a late dinner a very heavy dinner will sit on you and everybody's had an experience um, butter naans butter chickens, what they will do to you at night. You just don't feel comfortable. And there is something called as a bedtime routine. You can call it a winding down routine, whatever it is. And I was just reading in a very interesting um, article which said that make it an enjoyable bedtime routine. So whatever works for you. We're not telling people now that please stay off Netflix, put off your phones and get into bed at 9 p.m. If you think I want to get into bed at 10, 11, 12, whatever, an hour or so before start having like a wind down routine. It could be a hot shower. If the milk suits you, with some nuts you can have, switch the phones off, listen to some music, read some print. And in that half an hour, 45 minutes, your brain will start winding down and then switch off the lights. And one of the most important things is that please have a fixed time for bedtime and wake up. See, we have an internal body clock and the master of this whole orchestra is in the brain. So we set it. That secretes a chemical, goes into the whole body, the little, little cells. And the, all the small clocks function in sync with the big clock. But mm -hmm. when we fluctuate our timings, the clock gets very confused. All the other clocks also get confused. So in short, fixed time for bedtime and wake up, a good amount of light and exercise, decreased stimulation, and a good, regular, consistent bedtime routine. Okay. So those are the simple few things if one does, one should get a good night. And if once in a while you have a bad night, 
the most important thing is not to worry about it. The worry about sleep makes sleep bad. Okay. So uh, my second last question to you is what does your nighttime routine look like? So what is my nighttime routine? Yeah, so I have had a consistent uh, pattern, but I think mine has become more consistent in this lockdown period. Uh, so the nighttime routine is that the dinner is between, let's start from the dinner time about 8 or 8.15. So what I need to do is actually tell you the full 24-hour routine. That's, so when we take a history from a person, we take the full history. So we let's start with the wake up time. So if I keep a fixed wake up time, it can be anywhere from 6.30 to 7 or 6 to 7. I usually get up and then go for a walk. So the walk can be 20 minutes, 25 minutes, 30 minutes or whatever. And some days there is yoga plus walk. Some days there is walk. Um, after that, there's a very light breakfast, etc. Normally I'm at my desk at about 9.30 with a very short and a very small lunch break at about one for about 20 minutes and then work is till about five five result so i cannot take coffee which i have figured out for myself after about 11 a.m so i can only after that i can have a cup of tea maybe at about four, five but not if i have tea later than six o'clock i can it interferes with my sleep uh, so if i visit with the family for an hour or so hour and a half then I try and go for a walk again for about 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever the time permits. Um, dinner is usually by eight, either as a warm shower pre-dinner or post-dinner. Um, one hour for showtime, some Netflix or whatever, but we try and restrict to one hour. So I have seen that if I go over the one hour, then I've had it. Um, so usually aim is by 9 to 10, 10 to 10, 15, 20, I try and read. Aim is by 10, 30, 10, 45, we put lights off and I should be asleep in about another 15, 20 minutes. So I get a good chunk and uh, I don't need an alarm now so to wake up. So your once your sleep is done, you will wake up spontaneously and that can take you through the day. That is so impressive. I can never wake up without an alarm, honestly. I have, yeah, I, no, no. I also couldn't for many years. I'll let me tell you, <laughs> for all the years in the past, I have also wanted to wake up without an alarm. I wanted to go for a walk and I just could not. I could barely kind of just get up and reach work, you know. <laughs> um, but I think it's, it's uh, the consistency over a period of time and yeah. when you get your adequate number of hours. So you see, if you sleep late, and you try and put an alarm, I mean, try and wake up in the morning without an alarm, your body won't let you. Right. That happens but quite often. Yeah. So some there's a concept called a sleep need. Right. Okay. Everybody understands how much they should eat, what they should eat. Mm -hmm. So similarly, try and understand your sleep need. And then you won't need the alarm because once you get the full sleep, you will get up yourself. So if you feel that I need to wake up at this time, count backwards and get that many hours. Shut the lights off at a particular time. Then it will work. So all those years when I was also staying away very late, I, I could not get up in the morning. It was very hard. I mean, it's and getting so hard for people my age that we subconsciously shut off alarms. Even when we want to wake up and we have commitments, we don't realize we've shut the alarm off and gone back. Yeah, yeah because you are in that, that is actually you're in, a very deep sleep at that time when you don't have a recall of what you've done right it, it i think it, it's not just me it's very common with people in our generation uh, i think it's, it's going to come up in the next question that i ask you uh, how, what role do you think social media and the blue light that our phone constantly emits to our face is playing in our sleep at this point it's it's, it's playing a very very great role you know so so this social media and this blue light so one is a light part we just discussed that there is a, I mean, we don't have time to go through that, but there is a mechanism in our body simply, which tells you to sleep at night or which helps you sleep at night. So we are supposed to do everything through the day and the evening to make those functions work to their best ability. What does caffeine do or what does this light do? It blocks those functions. So we have two chemicals which are kind of surging up at night so to allow you to sleep. Caffeine blocks one of them, light blocks the other one. 
And if you do both, then you have blocked everything for sleep. Then I tell people, be happy at night, stay awake. Then don't worry. So either you decide, that's what I want to do. Right. So the light blocks the melatonin release. Uh, so sleep will not come. The second thing is when you are on the screens or whatever, you are also stimulating your brain. Right. You are reading, you are absorbing, you are trying to answer. So you are releasing a lot of wake promoting chemicals. Right. What we had previously discussed that keeping our brain thinking in the thinking mode at night. Yeah. So you are in the thinking mode. The brain is alert. So then the sleep will not come. So people say that, no, I am on the phone because I can't sleep. But we now know that the longer you stay on the phone, the sleep will not come. Second thing is that when you switch off the phone, switch off everything and you put off the light and you say, you know, it took me one hour to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. It's because the brain is, brain is very alert. Brain will not shut off just because you switch the light off. Hmm. Okay. So you need to have that wind down period, 10, 15 minutes, just focus on your breath, do some visual imagery, think of the best vacation that you had, which <laughs> hopefully you'll have again soon. I think of some good things, whatever something, light something, which gives you a lot of pleasure. So it's well known that those techniques will relax the brain. Right. So my final short question to you would be, uh, what is the perfect time to put away uh, all of these things before we go to sleep? Is there a specific time period that we should have for winding down? Yeah, so that has, I think, also changed people. The scientists are moving that. So initially it was two hours and it became one hour. I think now we are telling people 45 minutes to 30 minutes and I read a nice word today called as media fast. So the media, take a fast from it. Yeah. Another terminology I read was escort your devices out of the room, say goodnight to them, say bye to them, <laughs> you know. So do anything that works. Uh, but gently start winding down. So take a time, so take 30 minutes, take what, 20 minutes, but at least there should be a gap. Uh, we need to end the day, ideally between the end of work and the night, there should be a few hours gap. Mm -hmm. so you can't keep working till late at night and then shut off the laptops and say that I'm going to sleep. But the screens and even lighter stuff should, the social media should end at a time. Right. So choose your time. I mean, you know, another thing that is now being talked about is that we don't want to give people too many rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. I so out of those 10 rules that we have said, follow one or two what works for you gradually keep adding one or two more it's something like people who have an exercise plan right or a diet plan don't put too many restrictions on yourself uh, you know if you that's also what's happening now people are reading um, on google all the techniques for sleep hygiene and they come and say you know i've tried all nothing works <laughs> so we tell them that just do one thing at a time if you decide to do it, i'm going to just fix a bedtime wake up time just do that for one Hmm. next week you add a little bit of exercise third week you add something so we have these programs now which are four weeks six weeks to help people to improve their night right so uh, like let's just conclude this by talking a little bit about sleep medicine institute and what do you do so i run this place called as a neurology and sleep center hmm. uh, which like I said, because I'm a neurologist and a sleep specialist, I wanted uh, people to come to one place and get a solution to their problems from the neurological point of view and from the sleep point of view. So what do I mean by that? I mean that I do consultation. That is, you know, you take a history, make a diagnosis. But I also do investigations, like a backup. So we do sleep evaluations. We do sleep studies. We do treatments for sleep issues. Uh, if there's a machine needed for snoring, we do all that. For the neurology part of it, we do the EEG testing for the brain, for fits. We do the nerve testing. So that we are able to offer this, uh, because of my experience at AIMS and working with other numerous hospitals, right. I found that if you see a patient today, then you send them for a test, then they come back with the report. So I'd rather try and solve as much of the problem that I can, but it's an outpatient consultation based and we refer patients for admission if needed. Okay. But I opened a, during the online, this lockdown, I started another venture, uh, mm -hmm. which is an online training 
program for sleep medicine for doctors because like i said this speciality is still in its childhood here maybe reaching puberty and adolescence soon or maybe and a uh, lot of people want to learn about it it's hard to go anywhere and physically be present so we launched that school in may we've got about i think about 80 90 students uh, finished one batch i'm launching another batch and i've also put up some simple programs for the public because then i found that i'm putting it out for doctors and so that's called as a essential ingredients for a good sleep recipe uh, that's uh, in udemy and on the sleep medicine institute site uh, it's for teenagers and for adults i'm hoping to do one for uh, women and then i want to do one for the young mothers because i've seen that their sleep is totally gone trying to look after the children how to manage the children etc yes uh, so where can we find more information about this ma'am so we are in delhi i am at the neurology and sleep center hoskas Uh, New Delhi. Um, the website is also www. dot neurology sleep center. dot com, and for the online sleep uh, courses, it is www. sleep medicine institute. dot com. Right. And we are all we are on social media. So the Instagram, the Facebook pages are there for neurology sleep center and sleep medicine institute. and uh, we have a youtube channel as well amazing so we we put yeah. up small things uh, the 10 tips for sleeping well for some information for doctors some cases that i see so we do all that amazing so i think a lot of our viewers and readers are going to be searching about you and trying to find more information on how they can sleep well i think this interview in itself is very insightful and we've learned a lot uh I would just like to thank you for your time and uh, let, sharing all of this information with the masses and giving out uh, your time and your expertise on this. We really appreciate it, ma'am. I would thank you, and I think it's been uh, sometimes when you talk a lot and you interact with people like you, so it kind of makes you think and speculate a lot. Also, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank time. you, ma'am. Have a good day. Thank you. Take care.